uh, I would like to introduce our presenter for the evening. This is Mr. Mike Ross, uh, who he is the regional coordinator for the CAP program, which stands for uh, Community Access Program. Uh, and CAP is a bridge of a federal and a provincial program. And what CAP does is it has the goal of bridging the digital divide. So its goal is exactly what we're doing here tonight, is that we are bringing technology to people uh, and providing education around that technology. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Mike, but just before I do, uh, if this is something you would like to see more of at the library, if you have ideas of other things that you would love to see happen at the library, I would love to hear them. So please feel free to come and chat with me afterwards. And so for now, I'll give it away to Mr. Mike Ross. So thank you so much for coming. Again, my name is Mike Ross. I'm the Community Access Program Coordinator for Colchester East Handscap. Um, what I'm going to show you tonight is, is our 3D printer for this region. Um, I'll show you the beginnings right to the end. Uh, I know most of you just like to see the thing go, so we'll keep the first part pretty short. But I do want to explain uh, the beginning to end so you guys do have ideas uh, in the future when this goes to the public uh, later this fall. When it's open to the public to submit your ideas or have a good idea of what you need to uh, face with and what to do as far as to create your ideas and submit them. So anyway, uh, what we've got here is the MakerBot 2. Uh, there was the MakerBot 1. It used uh, what was called ABS. Uh, but it was, uh, of course, if you ever burned uh, plastic, what the smell was. Uh, so they changed to a different type that I'll talk about here shortly. Uh, but this is actually Replicator 2. There is a, what's called a 2X, so that can actually add two different colors come out at the same time or to make the different colors to, to, to mold together. And again, I'll tell you that in a little while. Um, but just to show you, this is the, the brand new version, the version two. But down to the top of the wall here, uh, start as we'll get going here. Uh, of course, why do we do 3D printing and we're on, the, on this level? It's to introduce new technologies at a developing stage. We're at the, basically the brink of brand new technology. 3D printing's been around for about 20 years, but of course the technology is quite expensive and only used in manufacturing. This is more of a hobby brain and uh, sort of uh, engineering type. You have ideas in that. So it's come to the general public so you can actually be able to see this type of stuff being made. Uh, of course, encourage use of technology in everyday activities. You've got an idea, hopefully we can create it for you. Uh, encourage interest in science and technology amongst the youth. This is the young people interested in tech, this type of technology. Uh, so develop and learning, community through cooperation and sharing. Uh, as far as the whole thing, our community involved with this, so we can come up with some great ideas over the next few years. What is 3D printing? A lot of people think 3D printing. I know I've been talking to a lot of people. Well, that's kind of a weird printer to try and print in 3D on a piece of paper. No, that's not 3D printing. 3D printing is literally, when it's finished, it's a 3D model. It's involved in seeing here with the different devices. Um, it's basically the creation of three-dimensional objects, solid objects, from a three-dimensional digital model. Uh, it's also called distributed manufacturing. There's two types. Uh, subtract, take it away. Uh, if you've ever seen wood lathes, if you use the wood lathe, that would be considered a subtract. You start with a block, take it down to something. This type of device is added. You start with nothing, and create something. So two different types. How does it all work? Well, first thing you start with is an idea. You have to have an idea to start to start to make something. Without the idea, it's dead in the water at the beginning. Uh, then of course, once the idea, then you make the 3D model. You can use AutoCAD, you can use SketchUp, SKP, all different types of programs. What we'll be using here at the library and at the CAP sites is the easier one to use SketchUp. Basically, basically because it's free, and also it's the easiest to use. Uh, of course, the, the, the step three is uh, the actual create the STL file. Uh, we won't get too much into that, but it's the actual idea of turning that into the code. This understands how to print. It prints in layers, so it takes that object and basically makes layers. It could be 20, it could be 200, it could be 2,000. Um, then, of course, it's layered and plotted in the G code itself. Uh, it has to be created with a G code that this machine understands. It doesn't understand English, it doesn't understand French, it doesn't understand Spanish, it only understands G code. Uh, of course, then we save it. We save the actual G code. We can either uh, print it directly. Tonight I'm going to show you how we're going to print it directly from the G code right from the laptop. 
but you can also save it, create it at home at your, at your leisure, bring it in, hopefully, and we'll be able to print it off for you uh, later in this year. Uh, of course, then the actual print, print the actual device, uh, the way it goes, and then, of course, the idea, lo and behold, it's in your hand. Any questions so far? Stop me if I'm going too fast, or if there's any questions while I'm speaking. Is that compatible with Mac and PC? Yes, it is. Yes. Yep. The replicated G software that I'll show you in a while is both Mac and PC compatible. And actually, Linux too, if anyone knows what that is. What is it made of? PLA. Now, this word I had a hard time saying is polyacid acid. Uh, used for replicator tubes. Made from corn, starch, and sugar cane, and biodegradable. We say eat it, but it won't hurt you. <laughs> uh, fumes are non toxic, so when it's being printed, there's no smell at all. Not uh, in the first generation, uh, we did use ABS, as I mentioned before. It's like plastic, it gave an awful, awful uh, smell, a burning plastic. And also, the other version was a lot more dangerous. This only has one hot spot at the top, and we'll show when we get printed, it actually looks like a blue gun. Uh, but also that plate you've seen at the bottom there that's lit up, that actually on the generation one of replicator was also hot as well, at 200 degrees. That way the ABS would stay uh, to the bottom. Problem is people would forget about it, reach in, and see you know, your hands are all back. So it wasn't user friendly. And the poor guy that taught me down at Dalhousie, they hit one, his hands, so we didn't want that one. Uh, and of course, uh, just ordinary blue and paint works well on it. So uh, they come in different colors, as we have sitting back there, uh, as you can see on the picture. Uh, you can sand them, you can paint them, prime them, whatever you'd like to do at that point. What happens if uh, it comes in contact with water, where it's corn starch and sugar cane? No, it's, uh, I throw in water just to see that. No. It it, it's, it's, uh, it's hard, very hard, and it seals up. And the water can't get into it. It's like, think of it as like a blue gun. When you're done with blue, it's that blob. If you take that blob and throw it in the water, I mean, after a few years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, uh, I've tried different things. I've thrown it in water, I've put it in gasoline just to see what would happen to it. And it's very resilient. Lighter on the other hand, of course, not that, of course. But no, I mean, like I said, it's non toxic. The original ABS was toxic. So that's why it wasn't a big seller because. If we brought something like this in here, little guys like that aren't going to be allowed around and stuff like that, and just the fumes alone. In a room like this, after printing for a couple of hours, the whole place would smell like that plastic. So. Will it deteriorate in time? I would imagine it does. It's only a couple of years old for this, so we're going to find out. Uh, it said they've just come up with a PLA in the last couple of years, so I haven't found anyone that says how long it will take to last. I would think we don't even have to worry about it. But, uh, we would put on a shelf, I imagine 20 years later, we're probably still sitting there. It says it's biodegradable, so yes. it's obviously it's, it's always going to go away eventually. Susceptible to uh, breaking down, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Over time, how, what the actual lifespan, I couldn't answer that question. But I wouldn't, I think you get bored before you really know if it goes away. Uh, the logistics of the printing, I uh, can print uh, from a desktop or an SD card, the machine itself, we can have it directly connected like I have now, or in the future we, have, we can take an actual SD card so you can save the projects, just to give you an idea. So if you have just a regular SD card you can have in your camera, uh, create everything at home, bring it in, we can pop it right in there and print right from the machine, it doesn't need a computer in it as long as it's created in that G code. Must be in the STL format. We'll get to that in a minute. I'll show you the replicator G software. It has to be in that format for it to be able to recognize what that actually print is going to look like. Uh, of course, it's converted to G code, code that is print, uh, printer can understand. Of course, I've already leveled this plate, but of course, the plate must be leveled in the correct filament for your color. Uh, if the plate is too low when it's printing, it doesn't actually. <laughs> on the plate, so the next thing you want to do is start a bunch of mess. It has to start from the beginning. If it's too high, I haven't had that happen yet. I can just imagine getting too high. It doesn't know where the plate is. You have to say if it's too high, I would think the first couple swipes you know real fast. You literally start scraping the bottom plate. And of course, your uh, object will not be created as well. The first two or three layers will just be messed as well. 
Uh, on the front panel of the device, while the printer and the LCD will tell you the progress and percent, so you can get an idea how long it take to print that idea. And of course, the temperature of the extruder. The temperature of the extruder is usually around 240 degrees. We found uh, the best type for the clear type. The solid colors we're having some problems with as far as the whites and the reds. They seem to be a little denser. Another 5 to 10 degrees that we're still working on. So we're finding that 5 to 10 degrees seems to help uh, push it through the extruder. It looks like the uh, tip of our blue gun seems to be uh, working out better for us. Uh, of course, when complete, you can pull off the ball and plate for the plastic cutting knife. Gently pull is an understatement, as I found it. Uh, smaller objects, not too bad. Bigger objects, uh, we can use an actual uh, knife to get them off. We find that some objects stick quite well, like you know, them, other ones take quite a bit of crying to get off. Um, Did you put something on the plate? We, it does come with uh, painters. That's the official thing. We try it. Uh, some people have luck with it, some don't. Uh, we tried it. I find myself personally, I find just the way you see it works best. The painters take and put on it, and seem to just rip it and make more of a mess. But uh, it's sort of trial and error. There's no guarantee with this type of technology, but they, they do send you with three or four sheets in the first five, and you use it for the painters take put on it. But uh, we kind of made more, more nuisance and more mess. That's what we found out there. The only good thing when you're painting the canvas, of course, that point is a scratch up. That's about the only thing I found that's going to put down. Um, if there's a problem with the build, use the LCD panel to cancel the print. Bring uh, yourself a stamp for it. It, starts, it doesn't know if it's doing a good job or a bad job. It just knows where that's going. So if it stops uh, printing, or if it stops, uh, if it goes offside a little bit, or if it's not sticking to the next layer, It'll, I, I left it by accident. You, if you walk away from it, thinking it's good to go, it seems like that's when it's going to screw up on you. Coming <laughs> back an hour later, and there's just a big ball sitting just a whole bunch of things. So you do have to watch it, but you can cancel it. It's not like, oh my God, I'm going two hours of a big ball with five minutes. How horizontal is that? Sorry.